Hey folks, welcome back. The flower we're going to tie today is the Clouser Crayfish. This is a classic pattern designed by a legend. The hook I have in the vise is a size 6 streamer hook. You can tie these size 4 through 12. It's always a good idea to have some different sizes in your box. The thread I'm using is a uni thread 8 aught in a tan. And I'm just going to start that thread up by the hook eye and dress this back. Just get a little thread base going there and then I'm going to take that thread back up towards the hook eye and I'm going to stop about one eye length from the actual eye. The first thing we're going to tie in is some 030 lead free or lead wire and I'm going to leave that on the spool. It makes this step a little easier. What we're going to do instead of wrapping this lead wire around the hook shank, we're going to tie it down the side. So just kind of place it along the side of your hook shank. Get some wraps around it go kind of loosely and then once you get it set you can start to tighten it up and we're going to wrap that back to where your threads about even with the hook point and that's where we're going to cut that wire off and now we can get some tighter wraps on it and lock it into place should have something like that okay it's running down the side of the hook now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, tying it in right on the side of that hook. Now this fly is designed to be fish dead drift. You want it to tumble along the bottom. Having this lead on the side of the hook shank like this helps this to roll and tumble and it looks like a helpless crawfish. That's why you've got kind of this specific way of putting your lead on there. So this fly isn't meant to be stripped. Anything like that is just meant to be dead drift. Right down on the bottom, you're supposed to look like a helpless crayfish. So get all that lead set. If you got a pinch and move it a little bit, that's fine. Right now we're going to start tying in some materials. First thing I'm going to tie in is six or eight pieces of pheasant tail fibers. I'm using natural. We want this to be about the length of the hook shank and we want that to extend off the rear of the hook. So I'm going to tie that in right behind that lead. And then these back fibers here I'm going to go ahead and wrap into the body because anything you can wrap in to bulk this up a little bit will help. This is a crayfish pattern so we want it to be pretty bulky. So don't be afraid to just go ahead and wrap all that in. There we go. Now we're going to take a mallard hen flank. And if you can see I've kind of pulled the fibers away from the tip of that feather so that I just have that little tuft exposed. And that little tuft is what we're going to tie in coming off the rear of the hook again. And we want that little tuft to go about halfway down your pheasant tail fibers. That's going to become the carapace. So just go ahead and tie that in. Get it started. And then you can snip it out. Now you don't want to mess up this feather just snip that feather out right there where you preen things back because we're going to use this feather again. Again, I'm going to go ahead and tie in those extra fibers. If this wants to roll a little bit, that's fine. Just adjust it. Get it where you need to be. So you should have something that looks like that. Now our next material is a piece of furry foam. I'm using olive. You want this to be cut slightly larger than the gap of your hook. And you want it pretty long so we got to fold this back over itself so it needs to be pretty long and I'm going to tie this in right here at the rear facing back get that tied in just like so okay now we're going to come in with some dubbing I'm using natural rabbit this has got guard hairs in it so it's kind of spiky you want to use a lighter collared dubbing on the bottom. Most crayfish have a lighter collared underbelly. And we're going to dub this really heavy. Again, we're looking for bulk here because this is a crayfish pattern. So I'm going to get a pretty big dubbing noodle going. And for the moment, we're just going to build a dubbing ball up here. We're not going down the full length or anything. 
just dubbing in one area using a lot of dubbing really bulking things out it's a good thing about this fly it doesn't have to be neat but just get all this built up here in this one little area like so now we're going to go back to that feather that we cut off we're going to do the same thing we're going to pull some of these fibers back just to expose that tip like that we're going to tie this in so that it splits down both sides tie it in right on the top this is going to become our claws so you can see off the rear here I've got feathers going down both sides so start that tie in and then go ahead and snip off this feather again don't mess up your feather we're going to use it one more time And now we're going to come in with that same feather and do the same thing one more time. Getting everything split and tying those down both sides. There we go. And you can actually ditch that feather now. We're done with it. So I'm just going to wrap down on everything a little bit, get everything cleaned up, make sure our feathers are on the sides that they need to be on. There we go. Now we're going to come back in with our rabbit dubbing again. Again we're going to dub heavy and here we're going to do just another ball of dubbing. We want to just clean up the area right behind where we wrapped in those claws so just a dubbing ball right behind that again going for a little bit of bulk here there we go now we're going to take that furry foam and fold it right over the top and we're going to tie it down right where we just ended that dubbing ball like so and don't be afraid to put quite a few wraps on here the more wraps you put in the more the segments really going to be pronounced so once you get that wrap down I'm going to fold it forward and wrap over it again get it going back in the opposite direction there now we're going to pick a nice heavy saddle hackle I'm using brown you can see I've stripped off a lot of the fibers to expose quite a bit of stem there I'm going to tie that stem in well down the hook shank there, get it nice and solid. There we go. And I'm going to advance my thread down to the hook eye now. And we're going to start dubbing again. So we're basically going to be dubbing in reverse. We're going to go from the hook eye back this direction. Okay? So same thing, don't be bashful with the dubbing. And as we go down through here, we want to build a little bit of a taper. So we want that dubbing to get heavier as we go back towards the hook gap. There's other ways that this fly can be tied, different order that is, but this is the way Bob ties it, so I just stick with his style. But you can see I'm being really generous with that dubbing and not being too particular because this is going to get plenty of wraps over it so all this dubbing will be compressed good to go there we go so now I'm going to take my thread back up to the end of that furry foam there and we're going to do a nice full wrap with that hackle and then we're going to do two or three open wraps just like so and then we're going to catch that feather with our thread and get some wraps through it this makes it much tougher and every third wrap or so we're going to bring that furry foam over 
and get a wrap around it as well. This is going to start building that segmentation. And I'll just get that out of the way. Do a couple more wraps. Again, capture it. Get some thread through there. Bring that furry foam over. Get some wraps through it. We're just going to continue that all the way down to the hook eye. And I'm going to go ahead and actually go the rest of the way to the hook eye. And make sure to get some wraps back through that body too. Just kind of snake your thread through. This is going to make this, this fly much, much tougher. And we'll do the last segment here. I'll just bring that furry foam over. Get some wraps around it. Now we can cut out the remainder of that hackle feather. Get some wraps in. Go ahead and whip finish. Come out that thread, and you want to cut this furry foam long on the back to give it that crawdad tail like so now if you wish you can come in and shape this tail a little bit you can kind of notch it just to give it that little bit of a paddle tail shape not a must but you can do it and then what I like to do is just go ahead and spin this in the vise get all this hackle splayed out where it needs to be and I like to trim off quite a bit of the fibers on the bottom so that the fibers are just sticking out the sides and you can see from the bottom that feather gives it a bit of a segmented look so even though you're having to trim that out it's still adding to the effect and then with the claws what you can do is you can come in here with your scissors push them up against that feather and just run them down and that'll give that feather some curl see how it adds some shape it's kind of like you're putting a curl in a ribbon or something like that there we go it adds some nice claw shape to that feather so that's it. That's the Clouser Crayfish. This is a great, great pattern. You can tie it really easily to match what you have in your water. Um, we have a lot of these uh, more green collared crayfish in our waters. You can go for browns. Um, definitely follow the steps with the lead and fish this dead drift. That has made a big difference in our fishing this if you it's just not designed to really have movement when it's been being stripped. This is meant to just be tumbled. It's supposed to look like a helpless crayfish caught in the current. And that's the way it's been most effective for us. So, if you don't have these in your box, they're super easy to tie. And to me, just one of the great classic crayfish patterns that's out there. And it, it's absolutely slam smallies for us. So, whip some up. Let us know what you think. Please like and subscribe. Leave comments. We love to hear from you. We wish you all the best. Tight lines. And God bless.